Today on the Transfer Talk Show, we're going to be talking about midfielders and are Manchester United about to rival Liverpool for Romeo Lavia? We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about reports suggesting that Manchester United are going to have to sell up to five players to fund a move for either Lavia or Amrabat, who we're currently chasing also. We're also going to talk about the takeover of Manchester United and is the £900 million deal with Adidas potentially maybe convincing the Glazers to stay on. Let's get right into it. So let's start with the midfield and of course Manchester United are potentially looking at getting another midfielder in before the end of the transfer window. We've seen Mason Mount come in the door already but we're looking at maybe potentially getting in a more defensive style player. Now of course we have been linked with a number of different players in that position, Amrabat being the main one. But reports over the last couple of days have been suggesting that Manchester United are ready to rival Liverpool to sign Romeo Lavia of Southampton. He is a 19-year-old. He is hot property at the moment. Uh, we've had the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea as well as Liverpool being linked with him. And Manchester United seem to be, I suppose, getting involved in that race. Uh, the Independent are reporting that Manchester United are ready to rival the North... Uh, to, Manchester United are ready to rival Liverpool uh, as Eric Ten Hag looks to reinforce his engine room in that central midfield area. Now, look, there are some, I suppose, contrasting features between uh, Lavia and uh, Amrabat, who we're also looking at as well. Uh, and the main one with that is, of course, age. Amrabat is, you know, a more experienced player. We've seen him play at the World Cup and play really well, 26, 27 years of age, whereas Lavia is at the start of his career. He's 19 years of age, very, very good player and a very good prospect for the future. Uh, and look, I mean, these reports are, I suppose, the kind of, the early initial reports that you do hear when you hear players are being linked with certain clubs. Uh, these reports tend to come from, I suppose, not tier one journalists first and foremost, but they tend to gather momentum. So I, I think there may be some kind of, uh, I, I, I suppose, positivity around it. I think there could be some reports there and I think Manchester United are potentially going to be interested in them. Whether we go and put in a bid for them or not, that remains to be seen. The big difference between him and Amrabat is going to be the price tag. We've seen Liverpool already have two bids turned down for the player and they've both been, well, the second one certainly has been upwards of £40 million for him. Now, we do know Manchester United are going to be I suppose, restricted in some way, shape or form in relation to FFP. We've spent an awful lot of money this summer already in the three players that we've brought in. Most of that is going to be going on the likes of Rasmus Highland, who we know has come in for upwards of 65, 70 million pounds as well. Uh, so, look, I'm under no illusion that Manchester United are in the market for another central midfielder. And I do think that Lavia would be a brilliant signing for Man United. I think he would... Would he be happy to come in and play as a backup to Casemiro? Not necessarily a backup, because I do think he could easily play 20 to 25 games next season. Um, but I think he would learn an awful lot coming in as an understudy to the likes of Casemiro. They're very similar players playing in the same position. Uh, and I think it would really be a good long-term replacement for uh, Casemiro. Now, look, I mean, we can talk about Amrabat as well, because we do know that Manchester United... And Amrabat is probably going to be the number one target in terms of that midfield, given that we could probably get him for around 25 million. Uh, and, you know, we do know that Manchester United this summer are looking not only to build, it, you know, an improved starting eleven, but also a squad, you know, because we were paper thin for the majority of the season last year. We seen when the likes of Christian Eriksen got injured, when Casemiro got suspended. All of a sudden, you know, Bruno was playing in a deeper position. We were playing Fred and McTominay, these types of players. So building a squad, especially in around central midfield, I think is going to be vitally important this summer. So I do think we will get another centre midfielder. Reports have also suggested that Manchester United are going to have to sell up to five players to fund a second centre midfield purchase this season. And I do think that could be the case because I think this report, now this is coming you know, from the mirror, so again, take it with a pinch of salt, but... Manchester United signing five, or, or sorry, selling five players, I think that would be very viable if we are going to be going and getting out 
and, and, and going for the likes of Alavia, you know. Now, again, I go back and I've said this multiple times that we do have the January transfer window as well that we can sell players before financial fair play kicks in in March, you know what I mean? Because I think that's the end of the of the financial fair play calendar year. So, look, I think, uh, I think we are going to have to see some outgoings not necessarily this summer. I do think we're going to have to get one or two off the books because I think if we are going to be selling four or five players in the central midfield area, Donny van der Beek, Scott McTominay, Fred, these types of players, I think if we can get them off the books this summer, brilliant. It'll take the pressure off financial fair play and having to get players off the books then in January. But if we are going to be going for a, a Lavia over an Amrabat, we are going to have to maybe sell more players. So, look, I would be happy with either. I really would. It's not like Amrabat is a 31 or 32-year-old central midfielder who's, you know, maybe past his prime. Uh, I think both players would be very beneficial to Manchester United. Again, Lavia does have youth on his side. But again, Amrabat has experience. So there's there's arguments for both. Um, I would be happy with either, I have to say. But look, let's move it on, guys, and let's talk about the takeover Obviously, we've heard some contrasting reports over the last few days that Manchester United's sale is potentially on pause by the Glazers. Then we heard yesterday from Mike Keegan that it, it isn't on pause and that there's still discussions going on and, you know, the, the process is still underway. Uh, reports have suggested today, and this is coming from the Express, that uh, potentially that £900 million uh, sponsorship deal with Adidas is potentially... I suppose, convincing the Glazers slightly to maybe stay as owners more so than sell up. Now, we haven't heard whether this is to stay on in the capacity that they have the club at the moment or to potentially sell a minority stake in it to get investment in and they can stay on as, as majority shareholders. Um, and this is something that we did talk about when this deal was announced, I mentioned it straight away that I thought this nine hundred million pound deal could potentially convince the Glazers to stay, given that Adidas are you know pumping this amount of money in. They're seeing the potential in Manchester United globally, the growth, the you know, I suppose the change in the Champions League format is going to bring in more advertising revenue, all of these kind of things. Uh, and we did also say as well that it could potentially be the opposite that this could be Adidas saying, well, we're going to invest this 900 million now because we know there's going to be new owners because the Glazers are potentially going to be leaving. There's going to be a lot more positivity around the club. You're going to be getting more shirt sales. You're going to be getting more sponsorship deals into the club. All of these kind of things. So there is an argument for both. And I can see the argument for the Glazers staying on when you see a £900 million sponsorship deal coming in over 10 years. Uh, I'd like to know your thoughts and comments on this either, guys. So let me know in the comments section below because it really is an interesting one. And it is one that's dividing, the fa not dividing the fan base, but it is one that is having contrasting, I suppose, opinions from fans. Uh, because, look, we're all on the same team at the end of the day. But some fans are thinking this is you know, uh, a big indicator that the Glazers are going to stay, but it, some other fans are saying it's a big indicator that, you know, they're potentially going to go because Adidas wouldn't invest this amount of money if the Glazers were to stay. So it's a tough one to, to, to kind of make your mind up on. And I really haven't got my mind made up on it. I really haven't because we've seen reports saying that they're going to stay. We've seen reports saying that, no, the sale is still on, you know, and... I think if I think if the process was on pause, this is the one positive I will give in relation to Glazers out, is that I think if the process was on pause and they hadn't or they had maybe communicated to any potential buyers that no, we're not making up our mind now, we're pausing the sale process, I think that would probably put the uh, you know, the non disclosure agreement, you know, I think that would maybe make that null and void and that we would probably have heard from Qatar or Jim Radcliffe if that was the case. So I think maybe it is still ongoing in the background. My big concern is that they're going to take a minority, uh, sorry, they're going to take minority investment uh, and that they're going to stay on as majority shareholders rather than selling the club in full. Uh, because we all know as fans, we want the Glazers out. We want the sale 
to be a full sale, you know. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Uh, let me know what you think about, you know, our central midfield area. Would you like Manchester United to maybe switch from Amrabat to Lavia? Obviously, it is going to be more expensive to sign him. He is a younger prospect, but Amrabat does have the experience. Let me know who you would prefer in the comment section below. And, of course, let me know what you think about the takeover. We are going to be back tonight from uh, 7.30 for our Transfer Talk show. We'll be getting into all of these topics in depth. Please smash a like on the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you tonight. Take care.